Lots of golfers feel they rush the golf swing, even though their swing speed is slow. So let me share with you a few technical ways in which you can feel you no longer rush your downswing and also some non-technical ways you can feel you no longer rush your downswing. So for me, the tendency is when people rush the downswing is because the backswing hasn't been completed properly. It's under rotated or the arms are very kind of saggy or narrow. Then we're on top of the ball very quickly. So it's not so much that the tempo is seriously fast or the swing speed seriously fast it's a case of there's no time because there's no width or movement generated to allow them to feel they have space and space is time for me so what i want you to be able to do in your golf swing is be able to complete your backswing correctly with the correct appropriate amount of width without over working hands and then that'll give you time and space to work down so if we look first of all the rotation side of things if I take this golf club and put it round my back like this and put my arms around it, and if I think about making a big backswing turn, trying to move the mid part of my back and try and get this club close to the golf ball to feel the kind of rotation. And I'm also doing this almost like a spiral staircase. I'm trying to work it from the top down, but I'm trying to feel that my body goes, then my hips go, then my knees go, then my ankles would go. So the whole body is spiraling to the top or from the top down is how I describe it in terms of backswing. So we really feel that we have that completed mid-spine turn. We're not swinging and kind of cheating the turn with like a poor shoulder movement like this, where the shoulder comes across, but it's kind of come away and winged and my shoulders are rounded in doing so. It's kind of squeeze the scapula together and make a big kind of robotic type turn. That way guarantees us a more correct turn. Now, at the same time we have that correct turn, there needs to be a tiny bit of forward bend over to the side, which again gives us time to get back to the golf ball. If we are too left bended or left sided, then we're gonna be very much on top of the ball very quickly, even if we've got great arm structure. So we wanna feel that we get this spine turned across behind the golf ball. I've got this rod on the ground here, and this is more for your arms, but you can certainly feel in practice you're trying to squeeze your scapula together and try and get your chest close to that rod. That might become a bit too excessive in terms of forward bend. I want it to be never outside your parameters of control. So if we start feeling we're moving off our feet too much and losing our connection with the ground, we call it big toe in the ground. If the right big toe is peeling too much, we're probably moving too much in the sideways fashion. And that can be with your hips or your upper body. But we certainly want to feel there's a, a wind up and a move to the right, just like you would be passing a ball to someone. Now on top of that, we want width with the arms. So this rod here is to look at, can we get your glove hand kind of outside that rod at the top of the backswing? And in doing so, obviously there's a further travel to come back. And obviously if we travel further, it's gonna feel like it's traveling slower. But if we travel further, we create more speed. So speed's created by width, height, moving fastly, all these things. But we want this backswing to feel like we are turning more than maybe normal, depending on how you turn. And the arm width is nice and wide. A great way of feeling that arm width is if you take your hands and put your right hand under your left hand and make a backswing and feel that stretch. That's the kind of stretch and structure. And again, it wants to feel like a sideways movement more than an upward movement. And that's the kind of structure we want to feel in our golf swing. So in the back swing, we're looking for three things. The correct turn, the correct width and structure with the arms, and then the correct structure with the wrists. So if the wrists overcock late, again, that narrows this all down, even if we've done a great job with everything else. So we want to feel the wrists are more thumb up to the sky. It's always gonna work more than we are trying to go, but I kind of call this the umbrella move. So imagine I have a brolly in my hand. I want the brolly to be over my head as opposed to be not covering me at all. So we're looking for the backswing to be big in body, structured in arms and structured in wrists. We do want a kind of 90 degree angle for sure. So it's not a case of no wrist cock. It's kind of load the wrists early ideally, keep that structure, keep that width and turn to the top. So getting the backswing loaded and completed with a white, the right structure 
for me, gives you the most time to swing down on. But we are going to cover some more conceptual and mental things to help you with not rushing down swing as well so you can take straight to the golf course. What I'd encourage you to do is work on these kind of things in the house in the mirror. Can you make a nice big turn, you know, keeping your elbows on the side of your rib cage? Can you then stretch your arms out with this kind of cross arm drill? Can you then make sure the wrists aren't flopping at the top? Those are the things we'd want you to feel that you're getting right for the structure side of your backswing. Let's try and hit a golf ball now, focusing on turning as best we can and getting the hands somewhere near this rod at the top of the swing without a floppy wrist action. Flaring the feet might help you rotate a bit more, so that's always a good idea, and the correct posture. So all I thought about there was turning and keeping the club nice and wide, and that certainly didn't feel rushed at all. Now in terms of the non-technical side of not rushing the dancing, for me there's kind of three things I'd look at. Tempo, so we could work on tempo a bit by using words or breathing, which I'll cover in a second. Two, we're going to use a mental kind of visualization exercise when you're actually hitting shots. And three, a concept you can use again to create the right flow in the swing. Now obviously you wouldn't be able to do all of these at the same time because they would interrupt each other. So let's do one at a time and you can pick your favorite. So in terms of kind of breathing or words, when we swing, we can use words that give us the right tempo we would want. So for example, on the back swing, it could be swing and hit. Now my downswing word is slightly smaller. And the reason for that is because the downswing is going to be slightly faster. In theory, it's going to be obviously twice as fast as the backswing. But it's not really the thought we'd want to make it kind of excessively fast. Because again, if you're trying to make it excessively fast, you're probably going to be rushing. We want that flow. So we can use the words like this. So we can say the words out loud as I'm swinging and we can go swing, hit. And we try and get the timing of the words to be correct. Now, if we wanted the backswing to be slower, we could use a longer word. The only thing I would say is we want to use one syllable words, otherwise you can make the pattern of movement a little bit jerky. And the downswing word wants to be something quite sharp and you want to finish the downswing word at the point of contact if we can. Breathing is also another great way of doing this because again, when we breathe, it helps us relax. And relaxing will probably make you feel like, again, it's less kind of robotic and less kind of jerky. Even though I want structure in the golf swing, I do not want over tension in the golf swing. So breathing produces alpha rays and producing alpha rays if you do any kind of weight training, it helps you obviously increase how much you can push and pull. So the idea on the breathing would be we'd breathe in on the backswing and you breathe out to the point of contact. And all you think about when you swing in the golf club then is the breathing. And again, longer, slower, deeper breaths would make it a slower pattern of movement. So again, you can match the breathing depending on your rhythm and the rhythm you're looking to do, whether you're looking to make your swing faster or slower. So if you're trying to make a longer, slower swing, longer, slower breaths and so on, same as the words. So the breathing or the words for me is a great way of getting the timing and doing it as a thought, like a patch you can put on you when you play to change your golf swing tempo and stop rushing. So just with breathing, And it helps take your mind off any of the swing thoughts you might currently have. So it's again a great way of decluttering the mind and producing those alpha rays to get you more relaxed, to let you flow. So the next one I want to talk about is an idea I got from a psychologist years ago, and it was with a tall player who he was working with at the time. And the tall player wanted to slow down his tempo so he didn't feel rushed. And what they got him to do is when he stepped to the golf ball, press play as if he's watching his golf swing on the TV, but watch it play back in slow motion. And then when he was swinging, he would try and replicate his golf swing in slow motion. And that just slowed down and helped initiate the correct tempo for that professional golfer. In, that, in this case, in, in point, that helped him produce better results and better scores. Now we're gonna hit you with one last thing, which is more again, slightly technical, but more again, Let's call it physical to help the right flow. So this last thing really is, is about commitment, I would call it. 
So again, swing thoughts, stroke commitment. So what I'd want you to do when you're hitting the golf ball is instead of hitting kind of at the golf ball, I want you to hit through the golf ball. And I love working on my body parts from doing this. So it's kind of right shoulder to just right to target or heart to the sky. You can go right shoulder to target if you don't rotate through the ball too much. But I find a lot of people who rotate excessively in the downswing will tend to come a little bit more over the top. So I much prefer the kind of heart to the sky or kind of zip on your top if you have one or buttons on your shirt to the sky. And that helps again that extension part of the golf swing too. And if we extend properly and drive through the golf ball properly, that makes contact good and it means path will also behave itself a little bit more too. So these little things can sometimes shift our golf swing ever so slightly in a better direction. So what I would do for me would be turn heart to the sky. And that gets me the flow and rhythm and the word pattern that I would want to do to produce non-technical golf swings, but also still I'm encouraging the right technical things. I would still have a practice swing that might be technical. So the practice swing might be all about structure of the arms. And then it might be when I'm over the golf ball, just thinking, turn, heart to the sky. And that's the way I would then try and take that to the golf course. Using either the breathing, the words, or that commitment or flow, but then working on the technical stuff to make sure that's not the reason why I'm rushing my downswing. Give it a go. If you rush your downswing and you're looking for more time and pace in the right places in your golf swing.